Hello, welcome to the land of Kakiak. My name is Laurel. Today is a mid-year update for my fourth grader. So we do homeschool year round. So um, I have a pretty relaxed, I feel like schedule uh, since I have 12 months to work with instead of like nine. So let's just go through what we are currently using. There have been just a few changes. I'm gonna introduce the curriculum in the order that we do our schedule throughout the day. So we start out with Bible. I do this as a family subject and we are currently using the biggest story and we are on the book, the gospels. I think we have, I think we have revelation after this and then we'll, we'll be through this curriculum. Since we do it like every single day, I do a new lesson every single day. Like if you were doing this at church, you do like a new, this, a different lesson every Sunday, but we are moving through the major stories of the Bible for children um, at a pretty good pace. We like it. Next, we will do science and this is new. So if you're familiar with me, uh, I do history for half the year. So we just completed the Good and the Beautiful year three. I do that as a family subject. And now we flipped over to science. So my eighth grader, he's doing you know his own science course on his own. But with my younger two, my first and fourth grader, I have started using Brian Builder's Science in the Beginning. So I really like this curriculum. It has been really easy to implement. Um, it starts out every lesson with some kind of demonstration or experiment listed here. Here's our instructions what to do. Unfortunately, I ordered the lab kit and probably over a month ago, but it is not here. <laughs> Uh, I got a notice a couple weeks back saying that it's on back order and it was expected to be here already because I think that was like over two weeks ago, but I still don't have it. And I haven't received anything from them. So I've been kind of winging it uh, with, I've been able to do most of the experiments actually, because it's starting out talking about light. So there's just a lot of experiments that you just need like flashlights and like paper. So stuff I did have around the house. I think there was one I didn't have what I needed and actually was able to find a video on YouTube of somebody doing the same experiment. So um, yeah, you always check YouTube to see if someone's already uh, done that experiment for you if you need a visual and you don't have supplies. So it'll start off with an experiment or demonstration and then I just read, you know, to them. We read and we kind of discuss what we learned from that experiment. And then there's always a lesson review. So they'll have it broken down like questions for like the younger uh, kids and for older students and the oldest students. So you could do this really with multiple um, ages. So I'd say we doing about, we're covering about three pages a day. And of course there's uh, the answer key. And what I have them doing for work for those two subjects for Bible and science is um they both have an everything else notebook this is my third graders that he's been using it's bible social studies and math and his you know his language arts we would do separately like i'm going to show you some example pages just so you can kind of see the level like what i expect with the kids so here is my fourth graders bible page right so he fills this in copies his memory verse he either draws a picture or i print him out a picture from the curriculum he can use Here's an example of a science day. So I wasn't all, this was, I printed this was for social studies, but I wasn't all the way through this notebook and I didn't want to waste pages. So I've just been crossing it out writing science. <laughs> and when I finish this us up here, actually just in a few days, we'll be done. I'm going to print out the one that's Bible, science, and math. But um, yeah, so I will sometimes just use the words or the comprehension questions from the book and I'll write it in for him. I'll have him write in the answers, right? Even sometimes just something simple like that. Sometimes we are drawing like this lesson. It was about how our eyes use light to see. And, and we looked at um, a diagram of an eye and we did some labeling. And of course I did some little fill-ins, those questions. So I just really like give the, like guide them what to do based on the lesson and what seems and what seems like it would make an impact on their memory. But um, sometimes we look things up online that would complement. Like this was one about, you know, visible light and invisible light. And so, you know, we printed some stuff off of the interwebs. 
and put it in. So just simple stuff like that. I do no prep whatsoever for science. I literally don't know what we're doing until I open it up <laughs> and we just go with what supplies we have at our disposal that day since I don't have my lab kit. I hope that comes soon. Okay, so then the next subject would be math. We are still using study arithmetic grade three. And this one, I, you know, I got the PDF version. I just printed it out and put it into a binder. The only issue I'm having, I think this one's okay. I think this, this is a better, I don't think I've had any issues with this scan, but I know I did have some issues with the study arithmetic grade no, with the number stories book two that I'm using the PDF version of, there are quite a few pages where like things are cut off or like missing. And so I kind of like have to fill them in. It's been fine that like, we've been able to use it, but this has been a much, I haven't seen any issues with this PDF for this book. So this is from the, I think the forties is published, printed and bound in Canada. I'm pretty sure this one, this is a 1940s uh, book, but I like it. Um, there's like color in it if you have a color printer. And they are teaching math in context of stories, which I like, I personally like. So he did start this um, getting into, he's almost done with this book. He's like, you can see his, his little bookmark. He's almost done with it. Um, this has started him into multiplication and division, um, just single factor. So I did add in those no prep math games that you know I've had these for a while. And we like to use these as a warm up. Um, and he's able to do this math pretty independently. So he reads the instructions on his own now. He gets going and he can just ask me if he has questions. Um, I bought the teacher's guidebook um, that goes with that book. So he can check his own answers at the end. So if you have any issues or if I, sometimes I know he's a very expressive child. <laughs> Um, so sometimes I can tell I'm like sitting over here at my desk and he's over here at his, at his spot. And I can see he's like Ugh, getting frustrated and I'll be like, do you need some help with your math? He'll be like, yeah. A lot of times it's just something simple. Like he's, uh, hasn't fully read the instructions or he was checking his answers and he was misreading the answer or something. But, um, yeah, but that's going well. So no changes there getting into multiplication and, um, division facts. I have introduced flashcard drills with him now for these facts. So this is the pile. So I, I just, I created a, I'll link them for you, a printable, um, you know, multiplication and division facts. And we just keep adding to as, as they're, as he did his twos and his threes, right? Um, and his fours as they were in his tens, I think. No, I think we've done two threes and fours so far. So we just keep adding these to, and we don't drill these every single day because he's been doing those no prep, you know, math games kind of as a warm up. But this is something that we do do maybe twice a week. I do, we drill these and then he can do right pile, wrong pile. and we can get the practice more pile, right? I needed another set of flashcards because I have another set of flashcards. And honestly, I invested quite a bit and they're pretty, they were, I couldn't afford to buy multiple sets of these flashcards for each kid that's using them right now right so since I my eighth grader is still doing some drill with multiplication so I was like this is just the most economical way is just to have printable ones that you could just buy once and print for as many kids as you need and I kind of like I like the small size because it was easier to keep them you know for space reasons and this is how I organize them I just turn them you know horizontal vertical and uh, this is the ones he's already covered right and these are the ones he still, we're going to be adding in. So they're just in order. So just as they are introduced in his book, whatever the next set is, I just add it into his review pile. And that's how we're keeping on top of our math facts. <laughs> so he typically does his work. He does his work in his notebook on his math page, right? So we just, I just have him work in here. So that would cover our morning time, our first three subjects, Bible, science, and math. And then they get a lunch break, right? Okay, so after lunch, the first thing we do is spelling. And he can typically do these by himself, but I like to kind of look over his shoulder. He's in McGuffey's spelling level three. He's got his book filthy. Um, 
he's drugged this thing all over. See, he's almost done with this. He's on lesson 27 of 29. And then I'm going to do some review lessons where I probably just go, uh, I'll probably give him like one big long spelling test over a day or two and see which one he misses to make a list that we do some review weeks. And we're just going to continue on. And when he's done with this, we'll just pop over. We'll just do level four and keep going. So after that, so what he had been doing the first half of the year, he was on um, the revised McGuffey reader, the third reader. And so he was reading that for his reading and then he was doing, using his companion notebook, um, which, you know, had a weekly schedule and he was doing really well with it and stuff. I pair this like for, um, for the write the grammar day. There's a grant, like we, we would do grammar or writing every day. So for, I would choose for that, I was using um, the gentle grammar. And he got through level, gentle grammar level three. And that's paired up with daily uh, vocabulary and different like reading comprehension and literacy skills. Um, yeah, we did like discussions and stuff about each passage. I love those readers. But he has just been doing the McGuffey readers for years now. And he said he kind of wanted to try something else. So um, I was like, okay, great. This, you know, this is the perfect time of year. We're halfway through the year. And we can pause the third McGuffey reader. Like there's really no, he's, there's really no rush. He's not like, like he, that's pretty advanced reading for a fourth grader. So we're going to pause halfway through here. And put those to the side and he is doing for his reading he has been reading his um, easy peasy reader anyways for independent reading so um i'm just letting him continue on right he's just gonna be now he's just gonna be reading this for his reading time and then he sits down with me and does writing and rhetoric he i started him on book three um i skipped over book one and two because i just felt like we were past those levels based on what we'd already done with the McGuffey readers and the companion notebooks and stuff. So he's on book three. It's called Narrative Two because there's the first ones. I think it's Fable, Narrative One, Narrative Two. And he is writing just straight in his little, you know, book. Sometimes like, yeah, if I have some do rewrite and if I do on paper, we just staple it straight in. So everything's just like kept, you know, together. And that way, I mean, the book um, really focuses on making kids think, which I love. It stretches them mentally with their writing and their thinking and their, like, you know, understanding of the English language and stuff. But I like to, I like to have a final kind of paper at, at some point, not just exercises, so that I can correct grammar and so they can get in the habit of correcting grammar. So I do that from time to time when it's appropriate. And yeah, we like this um, because we're doing it every day. I mean, we're already on page lesson 70. We're on, we're on page 70 of, you know, he's going to 187. So we're definitely going to finish this in faster than six months, you know. So we may do something else maybe over the summer for writing before we go back to the McGuffey Readers at for next year or we could just go back to the McGuffey reader and finish that one I haven't decided yet but I always look for I always look forward to putting together a little summer curriculum too and so that is what we are doing for language arts so that's different that was the update happy homeschooling mm -hmm.